Hi, I'm Alan Sitzma from New York Magazine. This is What Is Even Happening, where New York's writers and editors ask experts to help us untangle the news. Today, we're talking to Angie Marr. She is the owner and the executive chef at the Beatrice Inn, and we are wondering what happens this week when diners are allowed back inside of restaurants. Hi, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So let's just start there. Indoor dining, it starts this week, 25% capacity in restaurants, a whole bunch of new safety precautions. What does that look like? How do you see this playing out? How do you see it happening at your restaurant and just at the industry in general? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, look, there's two, there's always two sides of it, right? And, um, you know, as a hospitality professional, of course, I am so excited to be able to welcome our guests back indoors. Um, you know, I think it's something that we've all been waiting for for a long time. Um, but then, of course, there is the business side of it, the financial side of it. Um, and, you know, as much as, uh, as much as I think a lot of people are excited to be opening up up for 25% dining, um, you know, I think a lot of a lot of restaurateurs know the reality of it, which is 25%. You know, it doesn't even allow us to break even, uh, let alone make a profit or come out ahead. I mean, it's, when you talk about 25% capacity, you're talking about operating at a loss. Okay, you're talking about operating at a loss. And the majority of restaurants, I mean, you're looking at 60% of restaurants nationwide that have closed for good. Okay, 60%. That's a huge number. Um, and uh, putting up with percentage dining is the fact that 25% capacity, you're talking about 25% capacity of seats, of actual seats, right? We're not actually taking into account the bar business, the revenue that is lost from the lack of the fact that we have no bar business. And, you know, I think for a lot of restaurants out there, I know for my business, especially, it's 35 to 40% of revenue. That's a huge, you know, so you're, ta it's, you're talking about virtually nothing. So you can understand where, you know, am I excited to do indoor dining and welcome my guests back in, into, you know, the Beatrice? Sure, I am. Am I, you know, am I excited about the, the financial prospect of it? Absolutely not, because we will be operating at a loss. So then what is the incentive? Like, why do it at all if the alternative is to, you know, you're not going to make money if you don't open, but you're not going to lose money if you say you're operating at a loss that way? Mm -hmm. You know, I, of course. And, um, you know, look, I never closed. Okay, I never closed. And, uh, you know, I think the shutdown um, into quarantine was March 16th. And, uh, you know, and as you know, the Beatrice has, has always been more fine dining. So we've never done takeout, we've never done to go. Um, and we pivoted our business and we're open by the 20th. Um, and we, you know, we did takeout, we stayed open the entire time. So, you know, doing, look, doing takeout isn't, you know, you can't operate doing that either. Um, but, uh, you know, realistically, I know for me personally, um, the fact is, is that my restaurant is a New York icon and it has been around since the 1920s. It has survived prohibition. It survived wars. It survived hurricanes, it survived the Great Depression. Um, 9 11, Sandy, you know, I would not be a New Yorker if I did not keep my restaurant open for as I long as humanly possible, you know? So that's why that we that, do it. So I've heard people talk about this being the first step. You kind of, you, you do 25%, you, you mm -hmm. make the changes that you need to, you implement these safety measures in the hopes mm -hmm. that. 25% goes well, and it leads to 50%, 75%, whatever, eventually Absolutely. a full dining room. Absolutely. Um, but another complaint I've heard is that even beyond everything that operators are doing, responsible staff, diners have been the people who are reluctant to wear masks when they need to, reluctant mm -hmm. to take the necessary safety precautions. Uh, I'm wondering if you've seen that at your restaurant or how that, that's played out from, from your side of things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's been really interesting. So I'm I'm a chef by by trade, by training, um, and you know when we reopened for patio dining, 
Um, I kind of made the switch because my kitchen was okay. I had enough staff in the kitchen, but I didn't have enough people for front of house. So I'm actually, I mean, the reason why I'm in a suit right now is because I'm going to be managing my floor tonight. Um, you know, so instead of being in chef whites, I am in a white tuxedo jacket because I will be managing the floor of the Beatrice Inn, just as I have been since we reopened for outdoor dining. Um, and you know, it's, it's really interesting because I, you know, I've never worked front of the house. That is a, uh, area of expertise that I've always stayed away from. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, look, my name is on the lease. Uh, and you know, when your name is on the lease, you do what you have to do. Um, and, you know, so because I don't have any managers right now, I'm managing the floor. Um, and it's been both a blessing and a curse. Um, you know, in a way, I've been really, really thankful because I've got to re gotten to reconnect with so many of our regulars, so many of our, our uh, you know, our neighbors. And that's really been fantastic. Um, you know, and, and I think the majority of people know who I am, but, you know, for those that don't, like, I'm just some hostess and, you know, I've never been treated as, as honestly, as terribly as I, I, I have been now. And you would think that, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you have no idea who, who you're speaking with. Right. Um, and no, you know, diners have not been following etiquette. They've not been following, they haven't been following, well, let's talk about this. They haven't been following the basic etiquette of like wearing masks when they are approaching us, you know, to, to be seated. They are not following requirements that we have as far as like dining minimums, um, which, you know, a lot of businesses like mine have had to implement in order to survive financially. Um, but also too, uh, I mean, you know, look, I, I wrote an article for Food and Wine magazine about the new etiquette of dining. Um, and, and it is truly, you know, we are doing as restaurant professionals, we're doing all that we can. Um, but I mean, the entitlement and the, um, the attitude of a lot of diners is it's unlike anything I've ever seen. It really sounds like, I mean, it's just, it's a two way street. I think everybody's a little worried about what's going to happen. Um, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of critics who, who talk about safety. I think everybody's rooting for this, but in order to make it happen, it's a two-way street where the, the restaurants and the operators obviously have to be responsible and the diners mm -hmm. also have to be responsible. And they're as much a part of this as anyone. And, and the equation just doesn't work without them. Is that fair to say? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, yes, the equation, uh, you know, everybody has to pull their weight. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, look, you know, what do we love about restaurants? We love the fact that we can go to a restaurant and we can kind of forget about our days, our woes, whatever, because when you go to a restaurant, you're kind of, you know, if the restaurant is doing it right, you're really transported. You're transported and you go there for an experience and you go there to connect, right? That's, That's the whole point is we go to restaurants to connect. And, you know, I think that for diners, especially right now, they have to stop and they've got to think because for most, the majority of diners, especially those who are not in tuned to what it is like to be in the restaurant industry, or maybe they've never worked in a service industry or hospitality, um, you know, great restaurants are open, you know, in their mind, it's like restaurants are open at 25%. Fantastic. Life is getting back to normal. So for a lot of those diners that that's their mentality, it's, it's another night out. It's a, right. it's a night out to them. For us, this is our livelihood. This is our passion. This is our profession. This is how we feed our kids. This is how we pay our rent. And, you know, that in and of it, and so think about it. If you were asymptomatic and you, you had no idea or you, or, or you were, had a fever or whatever and you, you decided, like, you weren't going to wear a mask and you were asymptomatic, you come here and your patient's zero at this restaurant, right? And let's say one person gets infected at my restaurant. That means my entire staff goes into quarantine. I go into quarantine. My restaurant is shut for a minimum of two weeks. All of the costs associated with cleaning that restaurant, all of that, that's two weeks of revenue that I desperately need because you decided to not care about the precautions because you thought it was just a simple night out. Right. And that is a great way to think about it. We have to wrap this up. I don't mean to yeah. cut you short. This is all great information. Thank you so much for joining us. Of and, course. Um, Obviously, I, I'm, I'm going to be there. People are going to be there. We're going to check it out. So thank you so much again, and good luck with everything. I look forward to having you.